and DIA and A. That's Indiana. Ballin' like Reggie Miller. That's Indiana. I put up on my state. That's Indiana. Watch me rep it in your face. That's Indiana. That's Indiana. That's Indiana. Hi, I'm Matt from Ludovox and we are at Gen Con 2016, day three with Action Face Games and Chris. Hi Chris. Hi, how are you? Fine, it's the end of day three. I'm afraid people will kick us out. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll be fine. It's... So we are here with Dreamwell, your let, latest game. So um, what is Dreamwell? Uh, Dreamwell thematically is about finding your friends who are trapped in this dream world. Um, mechanically what that means is you're going to be manipulating pawns around the board to fulfill different criteria so that you can then score those cards and then build towards sets or just individual scoring objectives. Is it a co-op game? Uh, it is competitive, yeah. <laughs> so it is not cooperative. Is this is not. very important. Yes. It is not a cooperative <laughs> game in any way, shape or form. So how many players can play this and what ages do you recommend? Okay. Uh, it plays two to four players. Um, it is for ages 14 and up um, and it will play in about 45 minutes with a maximum player count. Okay. Yeah. And um, so what do we do in a player's turn? Uh, to win, uh, you want to have the highest score. Um, and the way that's going to be determined is based on any set bonuses that you've collected, uh, as well as cards that'll just score uh, whole sums of points. So uh, this game is unique in that it ends when somebody has played seven cards total. So if you haven't played seven cards, then you're probably not going to score as many points as somebody who actually ended the game. So. So uh, how do we play a turn? What choices does the player have on its turn? So on a player's turn, they have three actions from a series of possible actions. So they could take a move action, which is either moving their pawn onto the board, or once their pawn is actually on the board, they have to obey the rules of the tiles. So every tile has little doorways that exit that board, or that tile, I'm sorry. And so they would have to move based on that direction. Now there's a, a bonus to moving if there's a door on the other side where you can continue moving with the same action. So it's more efficient to move through doorways than to move into an empty tile. Okay. What happens if we move outside of the board like this? Um, so actually at the start of the game all the players are off the board. So if a piece is off the board you may move on to any tile that's on the outer ring. So. If I choose to move my tile off the board, I would then spend another full action to move it back onto the board anywhere I want, as long as that's on the outside. Okay, and how do you collect the friends and the sets? Okay, so collecting friends, um, like I said, we're manipulating both of our pawns. So on every single card, there are two characters and an environment. So I want to be moving my, tile, my balloon friends around so that between the two tiles that I have collected them on, they fulfill all three requirements. So on this card, for instance, I want to have this little character, I want to have this character, and one of these two tiles needs to have this environment, which is covered by this one. So because I have these here as an action on my turn, I can play this card down to the table. Um, this illustration here is the friend that is represented by that card, which is important for set collection purposes. Mm -hmm. This here is going to tell me how this individual card scores, and then this side of the card here is going to give me either a one-time bonus action or a temporary power. This game is unique in that every time I play a new card, it's going to cover up my previously played power, so that as I play more cards, I'm going to have different effects and different bonuses. Okay, and um, so when I have moved to um, the plant with this skull, do I do this immediately or do I trigger it whenever I want as long as it's not covered? Right, so uh, the cards that say move to or things that uh, would give you an action happen the turn that you play it. Okay. So when I play this and it says move to the skull, I would have to immediately move my piece to one of the two skulls on the board. Okay, um, I think we've covered uh, the basics of the game, but I have a question regarding the release date of the game. Is it out yet? Uh, we had an early release here at Gen Con, and we're expecting to hit retail uh, sometime in the next few months, uh, definitely by the end of the year. Um, this version here, 
as the deluxe Kickstarter edition, we'll be releasing a standard edition that has uh, standard size cards instead of the tarot size cards. Okay. Uh, is there any other difference rather than the, the tarot size cards? They, um, the edition here that has the box sleeve, the standard edition will have just the normal box art here. Uh, so this is what you could expect to find in retail. So, so thank you, Chris, for that overview of Dreamwell. Bye bye and see you on the box. I N D I A N A. That's Indiana. Falling like Reggie Miller. That's Indiana. I put on.